if Kalonzo Musyoka's decision to support Raila or Molo Dinga was an earthquake in the political space, then you can allow me to say that one of those casualties, the first casualty, is Mata Karua. And I did my previous analysis on some of the few reasons why Kalonzo Musyoka had to shelve his own ambitions to support Raila Odinga. We were treated to a situation where there was a very long protracted discussion. A meeting that have now been revealed was held in State House to try to implore on the Oka leaders to shelve any presidential ambition within that coalition so that they will support Raila Odinga. Then you could also see that in the face and the speech of Kalonzo Msioka at Yakarangla, that is talking about Azimio Oka coalition. But today the imaging was Azimio. That has actually put up, I think that is what we were treated to. The question that every Kenyan was asking was, where was Mata Karua? Where was Mata Karua? I did not see Mata Karua there. And just this evening, there is a feedback that I've just come up. And I'm still asking whether Jirongo was there. Because the other Nyakea, the other, the other gentleman that signed yesterday with the Oka was there. David Uchieng, the Ugenya MP the, with the Party of Movement for Democracy and Growth, if I'm not wrong, that one is there by default. But then Mata Karua was missing. And this sent a lot of speculation. Did this signal the end of NASA or the end of OKA? Or what exactly is going on? But just to make us better understand, there is the big question on how are these parties going to find a share within Azimio La Umoja? I was discussing, I was discussing with a gentleman just this evening. You know, this channel has very many uh, political analysts. Of course, uh, for me, I am more into the media space and I was a political editor when in media. So I spoke to an editor um, from one of the, I don't want to mention, but one of the media houses. Then I was just trying to ask him how Raila Odinga is going, is going to put everything in order to avoid fallout. But then there is something that I pointed out that the structure of, or, or rather the brain behind Azimio was to bring everyone on board. And to some of the parties that are still there are going to benefit pre-election, not necessarily post-election. For example, some of those parties are parties that are made by individuals. If you look at the KUP party by Lonyangapuo, Lonyangapuo is the only formidable leader from that party, and he's going to use it to win, to, to seek the governor seat. If you look at Meru, Mbas party by Kiraito Murungi, he's going to use Mbas to seek the Meru gubernatorial seat. What this means that within the coalition, ODM or Jubilee, which are some of the giant parties, huh, are going to shelve their small ambitions within some counties and some areas in favor of candidates from these other small parties. And according to uh, what that editor was actually telling me, that to many, to the interest of many, is that these small parties are going to benefit a bit here or there. Now, this is something that is very critical, and it doesn't really matter on who gets what when Raila becomes the president. Because now, that is the narrative that Raila, Uhuru, and now Kalonzo Musioka and Gideon Moy have to fight through. The narrative of who gets what, if it comes now, it is a recipe for fallout in Azimula Umoja. Back to the question, where was Mata Karua? This evening, you're finding out that Mata Karua was resting, was resting at home. I think in an exclusive interview with Kenyans.co.ko, it's, it's a website, I think it's an RMS website. Um, it is captured there that he said that she was just resting home. Now, she didn't attend that rally. Let's try to speculate. 
could there, there, there be a probability she was invited and opted not to? Was it a position by Oka that she doesn't attend it? Or, okay, was it a position in Oka that they go, uh, th that they were not to attend, but then there was an urgent last minute call to employ, of course, Gideon Moy was to attend. Was it a decision that Kalonzo Musioka and the team were not going to be part of the today's events, but there was a last minute lobbying? from the Azmiu team and that's how they implored on on they have subdued Kalonzo Musioka. Could be number two. Or number three, there could be a fallout within one Kenya Alliance. Let's look at number three. There could be a fallout within one Kenya Alliance. Because one of the things that have caused a lot of delays there and one press briefing after the other is hardliners. Remember on Friday, the 11th of March, when they were doing that signing, whatever they were doing on Friday is something that ought to have been done two weeks ago. But it had been delayed because of NAC Kenya had said, let's wait, let's peruse this document. So they signed it yesterday and it was like Oka was going to be held alone. Now, how could it be that now Oka have joined the side and Mata Karua is not there? But to more perspective, someone should just, um, I think a lawyer here, and of course I'm trying to look, I'm, I'm, I'll try to answer that question in my next video. What happens if Waipa, Kanu, and these are, the, these are the two parties that were in Oka have joined Azmiu, although Azmiu is not yet formally uh, registered, but the same parties had also joined the other coalition there. Could it be a high, could it be that this, Deal is already wrecking some confusion and breakup at Oka. And in case of that, who was going to benefit? None other than the Azimio captain, Raila Odinga. Because for the fabric of Azimio to hold, you have to give it on. If you look at the cape that Kalonzo Musiko is putting on in the shirt, it was written the buffalo. The buffalo is the symbol of Oka. And I think it's only Kalonzo who was putting on that buffalo. The Kanu guy, uh, the, the, the Kanu chairman, Honorable Idion Moy, was putting on his usual red Kanu signature shirt. That, that is how you see things around. I did not see Jirongo. So I don't know whether Mata Karua missed and Jirongo was missed, so we should not question. But I think we are so much into Mata Karua. Now, let me lastly, let me, let me, let me do my punchline in here, that Martha Karua do not want to work around Uhuru Kenyatta. And the moment Kalonzo showed intent that he was going to work with Uhuru Kenyatta, that in its sense sent Martha Karua packing. Now let's just try to face it. I have four reasons why I'm feeling the bad blood between Martha Karua and Uhuru Kenyatta. And I think it's not even the bad blood, the prevailing political situations why Mata Karua is rebelling. It is not shocking that she missed that event because even until yesterday, after signing that Oka deal, she went to Moses Kuria's event in Kiambu, an event they were attending, Mata Karua, Jimmy Wanjigi, and Moses Kuria. And it seems they have made a group, the Mount Kenya Unity Forum, and it is on a sustained attack on President Uhuru Kenyatta active role in politics. I want to debunk this narrative that Uhuru wants to cling on. But I, do, I just want to debunk it on, this is my personal observation in this. When Martha Karua, in 2007, when Kibaki did the dirty business against Railo Dinga, and that was blatantly seen that Kibaki wants to cling on power. The person that was shouting and was strong behind Mwai Kibaki was none other than Mata Karua. So when they come to say that who wants to cling on power and who wants to go home, I find it very hypocritical. I find it, it doesn't add up. But then the reason number one is this. Mata Karua, during the, after the 2007 fracas,
she was appointed the ministry the minister of justice and legal affairs but i think to some perception um i was reading some quotas that she was to be the deputy prime minister a position that uhuru kenyatta was given now to that to that extent she actually feels like there is that unfinished business so that is why she she has just something very personal with president uhuru kenyatta number two is the succession politics in central kenya if you look at the team of Mata Karua and now the new errant boy, Honorable Moses Kuria, and the new Gitonga in town, uh, I don't want to say Honorable, but I think it's Mr. Jimmy Onjigi, they're all interested on what Uhuru should exit the stage so that they take charge. And they want to say this is hypocritical because what they are doing is genuine, but they must do it with within the within president Uhuru Kenyatta it is it is easy for Uhuru Kenyatta to hand over to them but even for uh, honorable Uhuru uh, his excellency Uhuru Kenyatta his excellency Uhuru to hand over power you can only hand over power to someone who is there to be handed over to but then the fact like Uhuru leaves they take on so i want to ask a question if today Uhuru leaves the active role in Azimio in supporting Raila Odinga Enduru says Mata Karua Tosha. Will Mata Karua become the president? Can she beat William Ruto? She cannot. So I feel if they were honorable and they were really true to that call that they want Uhuru Kenyatta to leave, which is fine, which Uhuru is going to leave, but they want Uhuru Kenyatta to relinquish power, they're saying, but then they would have just coalesced around him, find, be part of that transition. Be part of that trail as government, then poly poly. Because transition is not just, I go home, you pick up. It's not like that. That is my, that's my perception on it. That is number, number two why she is not. Mother also feels that she's protesting after she was removed on the list of Raila Dinga's potential running mates. I analyzed in this channel that Bonfest Mwangi once made it that Raila was fronting Mother but the forces within Mount Kenyanity Forum and the State House, or rather Deep State, in other words, did not front Mata Karua because of her brand of politics. So just with that, and I think when she was, I would even want, I would even want to think that when she was going to Oka, Raila had an hand for her to go to Oka. But having realized that this is not going to work because the president seems to be dictating what's happening around Azimio, she has decided to walk out of it. So to me, I, I think that is something that is very critical to Mata Karwa because she she wanted to be Raila Dinga's running mate. And after that, because by all indications, Kalonzo Musioka is in high contest. If they are top two candidates for Raila Dinga's running mate, then Kalonzo Musioka is in that race. So she has decided that because of that, she's not going to bolt out. She's going to bolt out. Lastly, it might be Kirinyaga, but I don't see. I don't think it's about Kirinyaga because Uhuru doesn't, the, the Uhuru's Azimio does not have a very strong candidate for to face Kirinyaga in, in, in Jubilee. So if she wanted to go to Jubilee, to go through Jubilee, I think it's something that can work. But we cannot be shocked because she's a radicalized fella. And I, I think... Uh, Honorable Mata Karua is one of the politicians that she's actually anti, not anti the unity, but she's not the kind of politician that will say, yes, sir, let's go, let's do this. She's not that kind of person. She's that person of personal intra, introspecting. So that is not something that we know. But all in all, whatever the move they did today, and Kalonzo is going to say, Raila Tosha there, everything that happened today was the last nail in one Kenyan alliance. Whatever is going to remain there is a name, and they need all the naming rights they want, but I don't feel that the magnitude of Azimi 